Hello everyone, my name is Moish Dawan, I'm a PhD student at K. Logan. In this presentation, I want to talk about one of the design considerations in 3D printed implants, and that's uh, biodegradation behavior. Uh, besides traditional approaches to manufacture or tubetic implants or bone repair implants, patient-specific 3D printing is uh, gaining popularity in recent years. And that's why a prosperous project is a consortium of multiple universities, research units, and companies. We are working on the manufacturing and design of these implants. Uh, beside uh, manufacturing difficulties, considerations, material processes, synthesis, and these sort of things, there is another fact that should be taken into account, and that's design optimization. In K11, contribution and partnership to Prosper's project to work on computational design optimization of these printed implants. And it includes two aspects. One is mechanical stability, and the other one is biodegradation behavior. What I want to talk about in this presentation is about a second one, biodegradation behavior. And in order to clarify that why it is important, I have to go one step back and talk a little bit about the disease on which we are working. Also, arthritis is the most common form of degenerative joint medicine, disease and the main cause of disability in people over 50 years of age. In which, it varies beyond a protective layer, protective tissue at the end of the bones called cartilages, causes inflammation, pain, and loss of mobility in the joint. In hypothyroidism, the cartilage that lines at the end of the bone, at the end of the hip bone, or hip socket called acetabulum, and covers the ball-shaped femoral head, starts to be inflamed. The inflamed cartilage degenerates over time, narrowing the space that normally exists between these two bones. Although new tissue, new cartilage may regrow, but they are usually bumpy and irregular, causing further causing friction in the joints. The damaged cartilage will degenerate completely over time, causing further friction in the joint, and as a result, there would be loss of mobility in the joint between these two bones, acetabulum and the femoral head, uh, femoral head. The solution to this problem is a surgery called total hip replacement, in which the damaged joint is replaced by an implant that recovers the ball and the socket of a healthy joint. First, the damaged femoral head is removed, and then a surgeon carefully clears all the damaged bone and cartilages from the hip socket. And then a metal implant as well as a liner is placed into the socket. Then the femoral bone is hollowed up and a narrow and long implant called stem is inserted as well as a ball on the top. As a result, as you can see, the functionality of the joint is re restored. But there are a couple of problems and issues with these implants. One of the issues is at the end of their lifetime, these implants should be replaced and removed. However, during this revision and removal surgery, part of the newly formed bone will be also removed along with the implant, making it difficult to achieve further mechanical stability. One of the best solutions to solve this problem is making at least part of the implant from biodegradable material. And it means that the material will, will disappear along with the growth of the bone. It requires tuning the degradation parameters of the implant to the regeneration rate of the new bone. And, and this has been achieved in this project, in this study, by building a mathematical framework for assessments of the biodegradation. The model workflow is we convert the underlying science to mathematical models and then the mathematical models to computational models, like any other studies in this regard. The underlying science is that this current stage of project is the chemistry of degradation. But in the future, it will also include the biology of new tissue growth as well as the physics of perfusion by reactors in order to capture more accurate uh, cell culture conditions. Mathematical models mainly set up PDEs, partial differential equations, mainly a set of diffusion reaction convection equations in order to study the mass transfer uh, during degradation, as well as a method here, it is level set, level set equation in order to track the interface, because as I said, we are working on design optimization, and we need to know 
the shape of the scaffold during the degradation. And then these are converted to computational models. Here is a mixture of finite difference methods, finite elements, scientific computing libraries, and open source solvers. Uh, other thing that I want to show you is about magnesium scaffolds, but the same principles can be applied to other biodegradable metal materials with the minor changes. The chemistry of degradation for magnesium can consist of first uh, the solution of magnesium scaffold releasing magnesium ions free, free electrons. This free electron reduces water into uh, uh, hydroxide and hydrogen gas. The, the combination of these magnesium ions and hydrogen and uh, hydroxide will form a protective film on the surface of the scaffold causing slowdown of uh, degradation process, but in the presence of some specific ions in the medium, the foam can be dissolved, and as a result, we can just see again an increase in the degradation rates. A model to capture this should continuously and simultaneously include chemistry of the solution, formation of the protective film, and the effect of ions in the medium. In order to do that, it's not that much difficult. We can do that with a set of partial differential equations. We assume that we have first a reaction to for the film formation with the reaction rate K1, and then a reaction that shows the, sol uh, the solution of the film with the reaction K2. After having set of just simplification and notation, in order to not to repeat the chemical notations in the equations, we will have a simple equation for magnesium concentration throughout the medium, an equation for the film formation, and an equation for the concentration of chloride ions in the medium. But it doesn't include the effect of the film. In order to do that, we calculate the maximum concentration of film that can be formed on the surface by just assuming that it's a porous material and its porosity and density, and then including a saturation term on the equations. And as a result, this is a set of PDEs that we should solve in order to capture the mass transfer during degradation. But it's not the whole story. The other part of the model is capturing the interface, the biodegradation interface, to, in order to know the shape of this scaffold theory, its lifetime. It can be done with different approaches. The approach that we use is taking advantage of implicit surfaces. Surfaces that are uh, described by a set of, by PDEs or equations. And here we use level set equations. The general form is this, but after doing some simplifications and also applying our constraints and mass transfer uh, principles, we can get this equation. And this is the fourth equation to solve. So we have four equations and we need to solve them. This is not feasible to take advantage of sophisticated software packages, I mean commercial packages that are already out there, such as Comcell or Avacus, because it's very difficult to have full control in the model, which we need, as well as they are not that much high performance even when you scale up your simulations. As a result, we went to just developing our own software by using uh, numerical computation principles and to discretize these PDs that I showed you. And we use finite difference method for time derivative terms and finite element for special derivative terms. And we also have to deal with uh, refining the mesh on the surface in order to capture the degradation more accurately. Here, I want to just show you an illustration of the mesh that we have in order to have a better understanding of the results that I want to show you because uh, it's an Eulerian mesh. We do not have any mesh eliminations or continuous damage to this common to see in these sort of studies. Everything inside is this mesh. We insert the implant scaffold inside this. Part of the mesh is marked as that's the implant. And then we refine the mesh on the interface. So this is the final mesh that we usually have. As an example of this in 2D, if you have a cross-section of a magnesium or porous magnesium scaffold, the mesh will be something like this. And as you see, everywhere is meshed. The mesh is refined on the interface. And uh, uh, both the medium and the scaffold serve on mesh because we, we want to study mass transfer inside. And for a 3D, it would be something like this for a simplest true 
screw in a cylindrical domain. Let's go to the results. This is the first result I want to show you. Uh, that's uh, the film that is formed on the scaffold that you saw before. The red regions are the formed film, and uh, those dark blue ones are the scaffolds. Here you can see how it's degrading over time and how the forms, film is formed. Both, are, both animations are at the same time, one with computational mesh and one without. Next, see how the degradation is stopped according to the formation of the film in this condition. And this is a zoom out view of the same scaffold. You see, again, the formation of the film. A couple of 3D examples as well. This is a bulk material inside a medium. And you can see, again, the formation of the protective film on the surface. This is a sample scaffold, of course, a very small one in order to have an exaggerated uh, degradation. It happens very fast, but you can see the release of magnesium through the medium and the degradation of the surface of the scaffold. And this is what has been achieved using that level set equation that I showed you. This is also for a simple screw, simple 3D screw in a cylindrical domain. Re again, releasing the magnesium. And this is just a post processing of the level set equation, and level set uh, function that we had for a porous scaffold. And you can compare it with the initial shape with that uh, transparent surfaces. In order to verify and validate the model, we need different bioreactor setups for in vitro data because uh, we should accurately capture the physics of the bioreactor in the model, so it's important to have it just in experiments as well. And there are different approaches to validate the models. We can just directly measure the mass loss and continue with the predicted value in the model, or we can measure side products, so, such as hydrogen gas that is formed during the degradation. And we also had lots of sensitivity analysis or convergence studies because they're crucial for uh, in-house codes. At the first stage of the research, we are working with static experimental, experimental setup that just generates uh, a criteria, data, some sort of data to validate the model. They are mostly related to immersion tests that a sample is floated inside a medium and then the side products such as hydrogen gases are measured and based on the stoichiometry of the degradation that I showed you, we can calculate the mass loss. It gives us diagrams like this, in which we can, you can see the form hydrogen, and here, just as an example, you can see the degradation is stopped after four days, because uh, we have no further hydrogen evolved. We use those data in order to calibrate a model, because uh, we have four quantities that are known and are not feasible to just get them from thermodynamic databases. In order to do that, because the model is relatively computational intensive, we need an efficient approach to minimize the number of iterations that we need to run a model, and we use a Bayesian optimization approach. It chooses the points clearly in a smart way, so it reduces the number of times of, uh, of the time that we need to run a model indeed. And as you can see here, it's more towards the points, the desired points that reduces the cost function that we have. And the cost function is the difference between experimental data and computational data. And as you can see, the behavior of the, uh, the models is just the same as experimental data, but just according to the differences between reaction rates, it should be calibrated, something like this. And at the end, this would be the calibrated model. As a conclusion, as a, uh, yeah, I showed you that how we developed a quantitative mathematical model uh, to assess the biodegradation prior to going for any in vivo or in vitro experiments. And once fully validated, this model can be used to uh, assess right design and properties of magnesium or any other type of metallic implant materials for specific applications. Here it was specific orthopedic applications.
Thank you for your attention.